welcome to Kanpai Planet. I'm Mac. I've lived in Japan for 15 years and I'm about to embark on one of the biggest adventures of my life. I'm going to spend one week making Japanese sake and I'm doing it on one of the most magical islands in the Japanese archipelago, Sado. Join me on this special journey into the heart of Japanese culture. I can't believe this is my final day at Gakogura. I'm really going to miss this place. I'm about to enter the Shikomi Shitsu for the final time. Very emotional about this. It's been an incredible time in this room. In the koshki is the 274 kilos of rice that we washed yesterday. Behind me, our tomezoa rice is getting steamed at a searing 100 degrees Celsius. Kondo-san is looking intently at the clock, waiting for it to hit the 50 minute mark. Then he swings into action. As the pressure reduces, it looks like somebody sticking their fork into a freshly baked puff pastry pie. If that were me, I'd be wearing oven gloves. Wow, we could feed the 5,000 with this. The main goal of our last day here at Gakogura is the Tomezoa, the third edition of Koji Water and Steamed Rice. It's the final stage of the Sandangji Komi, and it's the same volume as the other editions and the Shubo combined. First, we have to tackle the epic task of removing all this rice and cooling it over the next few hours. And I thought yesterday was tough. We flip the rice and use the edges of the Hessian cloth to insulate our hands as we flatten it back out. Steamed rice, or mushimai, is cooled to under 20 degrees Celsius. If it goes into the tank too hot, the whole mash could be ruined. Glasses and steamed rice don't mix. Kondo-san takes a break and joins the cooling ranks. 20% done, and there's still a ton of shoveling to do. This place is already bursting at the seams with steamed rice. Where in the kura are we gonna put it all? I've given up on my glasses. I can't see either way, whether I'm wearing them or not. We take some steamed rice to the fridge and come back with Koji for the Tomezoe. Koji is the rice that's been sacrificed by Koji mold. One of my favorite parts of the process is seeing Koji go into the tank because it's pretty special stuff. Koji enzymes convert rice starch to glucose, while the yeast simultaneously transforms that glucose to alcohol. This process is called multiple parallel fermentation, and it's one of the reasons that sake is so unique. Building and balancing a fermentation is a science that's extremely difficult to master and involves accurate management of quantities temperature, speed, and time. This is the last koji. The quantity of koji enzymes is calculated so that sugar production does not outstrip yeast consumption, 
or vice versa, depending on the mash target temperature, which determines what type of sake is produced. If fermentation speed is slower than the starch to sugar conversion rate, the resulting sake will be too sweet. If fermentation is too fast, the brew will lack umami. Our sake is a Genshu Junmai Daiginjo. A Daiginjo is a sake made from rice polished down to at least 50% and requires a low fermentation temperature, around 10 to 12 degrees Celsius. Junmai means it's made without using brewer's alcohol. Genshu means it's undiluted, no water added after pressing and before bottling. It's a hive of activity in the kura. Piping hot steamed rice is still being shoveled out. No rest for a kurabito on Tomazoa day. I thought I was on fridge duty. Where there's steamed rice, there's cooling in every available space. When Tomoyuki asks for volunteers, my hand goes up first for fridge duty. I'm now locked in the fridge, but at least we've got a reasonably healthy supply of sake to last us should Armageddon happen outside. I'm toiling away with Hotta-san. We actually met before I even got to Gakogura. <laughs> In their historical house on Kyomachi Street near Kinzan Gold Mine, Hotta-san's wife established a small cinema cum cafe. Gashima Cinema is complete with an authentic vintage film projector. As well as helping out with the cinema, Hotta-san works hard at Obata Shuzo. I ask him what his favourite part of the sake making process is. Sake zukuri no process wa ichiban suki na stage wa nan desu ka? Kanpai. Boku mo. Me too. My, my favourite is Watashi Speaking of kanpai, Back on day five, we started the shibori, the pressing of the previous Gakogura group sake. Now, 48 hours later, that's complete. All the liquid from the fermented mash has been filtered out. I'm very curious to see inside. Wow, I didn't expect them to be that low in the fune. They are pancake flat. Amazing. 160 of my beloved bags that I'm so looking forward to cleaning. Life would be pretty dull without these. This is sake kasu, and I've just been given some permission to try some. These are the leftover solids from the rice mash called sake kasu. It has a cake-like consistency and is basically undissolved rice and yeast. It also contains about 8% alcohol. It's got a very dry taste, actually. I think a lot of the sweetness has gone into the sake itself. It has beneficial effects like decreasing blood pressure and reducing body fat. Pretty sharp, acrid punch. Super healthy, though. Come by. sell sakakasu, but as you can see, they have so much of it that it's often just given away for free. This kasu hagashi is tricky and sticky, but Shimakura-san patiently teaches me the tried and true technique for removing the sake lease. Oh, 
Perfect. Highly nutritious, sakalis has a variety of uses. It can be eaten as is, toasted or used in cooking, used to make amazaka drink, kasu soup and Japanese pickles. It can also be used to make shochu and vinegar. Fun fact, Kurabito are famously known for having baby soft, wrinkle-free hands well into old age. The reason? Kolji is packed with enzymes and amino acids that help moisturize and nourish the skin. And it is, like many parts of the sake making process, very satisfying. Speaking of satisfying, I've been wanting to taste the nakadori. My sake sense is tingling as I notice a small gathering over by the fermentation tank. Please, sir, can I have some more? I take one more cheeky sip and I'm left literally holding the ladle. Should have gone for another dip. That's the nakadori of the previous group sake and it's absolutely delicious. It's been an action-packed morning, but we're surrounded by steamed rice demanding more attention before lunch. So this is now refrigerated. Mm. This rice is being cooled, and so they've switched the model mm. from that sauna that we've experienced when we were making koji to a refrigerated environment. Very high tech. For lunch, we're back for a quick bite at Nagahamaso. Last time, I had the bountiful Kaisendon, so today I'm trying the tonkatsu. Top draw. Just one final little bit of prep for this mushy mite, this steamed rice, before it joins its sisters in the main fermentation tank for the tomezoe, the final step of the sandangjikomi. Now for the final act, adding all this steamed rice to the tank. Gotta give that fuel to the koji and the yeast. First, we add the coolest rice from the fridge. Kondo-san and I are some kind of rice-ferrying dream team. Toji Nakano puts the I in team by doing all the heavy lifting himself. Rice equals sake and sake equals money. So I'm always very nervous about tipping some out of the bag, even now, seven days on. <laughs> My ferrying form is improving. This is the way forward. Shame it's the final day. Shimakura-san inserts a long thermometer to check that all's well and correct before adding the final portion of steamed rice. That's Goldilocks range for the start of a Daiginjo fermentation. Now, just one final push to complete the tomezoe. This kaira is the final step of the process that we're going to be participating in this week. So my heart's beating very fast. I really don't want to leave. This is my final ascent and my final look down into the Moromi of the Rising Dragons. It'll ferment in here for 22 days and then be pressed to produce our own unique sake. It's a lot thicker. The tank's filled up for about yeah. everybody. At last, our moromi is complete. Now it's up to the koji and the yeast. <laughs> I'm feeling quite humbled that Nakano-san, a great toji, took the time to teach me a little of his craft. Thank you very much for everything. You've been incredible. 
I want to be a posse one day. <laughs> Good to see Torji Nakanov smiling. Brewing sake really does brew happiness. I love a bit of pomp and ceremony. Kenny, Kenny one, hand number four. You successfully completed the sake making experience program at Gag Gogla. and I really just wanted to take this opportunity mm. to say thank you so much for everything that you've created here. Thank you to you and thank you to your amazing team, Torji, Nakano and the Kurabito. Everybody has been absolutely incredible. So, arigato gozaimasu. The pleasure is mine. <laughs> Our staff every day uh, learn a lot. So this is good opportunity for us as well. And that's a wrap on day seven. And my time at Gakogura, Obata Shuzo's fantastic brewery school. It's been an incredible week making our own boutique Nihonshu. I've learned so much about what really makes Japanese sake so special. And I'm going to be taking that forward on my Kanpai Planet mission. My time here on magical Sado Island has truly changed my life. So how will our sake turn out? Stay tuned to Kampai Planet to find out. Until next time, Kampai! <laughs>